monsters. They exist in every single folklore. Are they truly there? Or are they the product of the human imagination, a reflection of the current society in which we inhabit? My name is Lila. It's not my birth name. It's the name they gave me at the Poverty Program Center. My birth name, I would rather not remember. I am a senior analyst at a major bank. I make between 70 to 80K a year. I have a wonderful husband and two lovely daughters. And I live in the world's 27th richest city, New York, in the most powerful country in the world, the United States of America. In such a circumstance, what the hell do I know about monsters? As I looked out the window of the densely populated street, I remembered a story of when I was 14. That was the time I met monsters. I used to live in the Philippines, in Leno de Sur, the poorest part of the country. The poverty rate there was 68.9%. My family, of course, was part of that statistic. We would see monsters everywhere we go. The human horrors of rape, murder, crime at every corner. My dad was an abusive man. He worked as a coal miner, so he couldn't hear very well. Aside from working, what he loved to do most was to drink. And after he was drunk, he would just lay around the house and, if we were lucky, he would go to sleep and leave us alone. My mom worked two jobs, one in the day and one at night. She would come home from an 18 hour shift and as the eldest daughter in the family, I would have all the housework done so she could comfortably go to sleep. Life was hard, but there was hope. I saw a light in the distance. It seemed to be within my reach. One day, my cousin, I will not mention her name, dragged me out. This cousin of mine was courageous to say the least. She dared to do anything, really. She was obsessed by the supernatural and ghosts and legends and stuff like that. And with regard to the recent people who have been disappearing from our village, she believed it had to do with the Menenengel. The Menenengel was a mythical creature of Philippine legend. Having the body of a hideous female creature, the being was rumored to be able to detach the upper torso of its body, sprouting wings and flying like a bat. It is said to prey on sleeping people, pregnant women, draining people's blood and sucking the life out of fetuses. A all in all horrific monstrosity. My cousin had heard that the place of disappearance was out in a nearby waterfall. The afternoon was a hot one, and originally being told we were going swimming in a nearby lake, she tricked me into venturing out with her there. After we had enjoyed our late afternoon swim, the sky had already begun to fade. It was getting dark, and despite finishing all of my chores, I needed to get home. The Philippines didn't treat us kids very well, especially in the dark after hours. Kids would disappear and never be seen again, sold off as slaves or end up captive in some sick twisted basement. So we were always advised, especially as girls, to stay indoors after the lights went out. Let's go, I said. We have to get home. Just follow me. I have a feeling about this. My cousin was absolutely determined it was the Menenengel. She walked deeper into the forest. She was going to find her. This was the area where the bodies of two young girls were found and many were reported to be missing. I didn't believe in monsters like she did, but I knew that danger would find us if we didn't turn back now. The last of the sun faded into the curtain of the dark night sky, 
we were in utter darkness. In the Philippines, street lights are not the fundamentals of society, especially in less populated areas, so no lights survived in the blanket of the night. So that night, we were only vaguely illuminated by the twilight of the full moon. Despite so, our surroundings were, in fact, visible. Dim, but visible enough. As we ventured out into the dark forest, shudders ran down my spine. I've always had a sixth sense for danger. And this was it. I began tugging at my cousin. Let's go! She would not listen, dragging me further into the darkness. As we walked further and further, the shadows became intertwined with the light into an illumination of purple-grayish tint. Shapes of trees became more menacing, and the perception of time and distance began to get distorted. My cousin seemed to be in arm's reach, but when I grabbed out to touch her, all I could feel was air. It was at that moment I realized that She was no longer in front of me. I panicked. I looked around frantically. I saw her. Behind me a few feet away, she had stopped walking and I had not noticed. It was a man. He was grabbing onto my cousin, a powerful tattooed paw around her mouth, muffling her frantic cries. It seems that they did not see me. I ducked down. What should I do? Before I could even think, I let out a shrieking cry. A pair of hands had grabbed me and flung me onto the floor. I tumbled onto what felt like human. I felt something moist. It was something wet. I looked closer at the substance on my hands. It was blood. And then a horrifying scene. In front of me was a torsoless pair of legs. The Menanangal. Then a boot stepped onto my head. My cousin was dragged towards me. I could hear the two men speaking in the Philippine Maranar language. They were describing the horrible things they were going to do with us. Each detail, graphic, depraved, encased by their cackling and sniggering. My cousin started to cry. And then... We all heard it. A screech, a howling, echoing screech. A white light illuminated everything. The trees, leaves, grass, all became white. I looked up, in the midst of the bright illumination, a dark, bat-like figure was seen overhead. As it swooped down, a gust of wind dashing through my bones, I closed my eyes, then... Darkness... I could no longer feel force upon my body. The men were also silent. I opened my eyes. I stood up. In front of me was a demon. A woman-like creature with wings. Its face stern. But for some reason, I was not frightened. Rather, I was intrigued. I looked at it, and it looked at me. It was the Menanangal. I've never believed in monsters, but what can I say now? It all happened so quick. But I'll never forget the gaze of its eyes. It seemed to be talking to me, conveying a message. It was the faintest of messages, a sound less audible than even a distant whisper. But somehow I could hear it say, leave hurry then it took off into the sky i looked around the men were nowhere to be found my cousin was crouched in a corner crying my once brave cousin was now quivering in fear i walked over to her isn't this what you wanted to see did you see her she nodded her head frantically in acknowledgement. I picked her up and... 
we went home. We reported the incident to the local authorities. Apparently, they managed to find the corpses of two men in that forest. The men were very uniquely murdered. Not only were their organs all ripped out and supposedly eaten, their bones and other cartilage was also missing. It was as if the inner fillings of the bodies had been removed, with only their skin and some muscle tissues remaining. The two men were later identified to be human traffickers, dealers of slaves and murderers. The numerous bodies of the girls found in the forest and the missing people these past few months were later discovered to be the doing of these men. In a shack located a little deeper in the forest, they found three other men living there, identified to be accomplices of these two men. Strangely enough, their bodies were also brutally mutilated, and it was fairly recent, their blood still being fresh. Inside the shack, there were 50 to 60 chained and caged little girls, aged 2 to 9, who were bruised all over and had been sexually abused. The authorities managed to rescue all the girls and return them to their families. It was almost 6 p.m. Today is my birthday. As I'm riding in my car in the New York City, on my way home, I think to myself, monsters do exist, but if we look closer, who are the real monsters? Monsters don't have to have wings. Monsters don't need to fly. So don't be like my cousin. Don't base assumptions off of legends and tales. As I looked out the window of my car, I see a bat-shaped being flying in the sky. I don't know if it's the Menanengal. I don't wish to make assumptions. I don't wish to make legends. I just look at it and smile.